Good boy. <laughs> Hungry boy, I got a treat for you. You feed the crazy horse some of the homing oats, and it gallops away with a whinny. Or rather, <laughs> hopefully it's headed home and not into the 12th dimension. Simple enough. Oh, yeah. We can just write. Crowbar's in here, I think. Our founder, Zef Zephaniah Boring. He was actually a really interesting guy. Dirty mug here. Benjamin Crockett, he showed up way too early. Yeah, I love that. Beauregard. He is... Resistant, so he'll take only seven. So let's bean up. Damn. Yeah, even such simple gameplay as, like, trading hits like this. This is pretty pleasurable gameplay as it goes. Good. That means the next one will be a kill. <laughs> you put a stop to Captain Skeleton's unnatural animation. We got the Cavalry Saber and the Sweet... Or the Gold Tooth. So we can swap out the pistol. Oh. We just have another other hand. I thought this was an offhand. Here comes the cavalry saber. Um. Cool. A skeleton. You're not getting past without a scuffle. A scuffle it is. Who are you? May as well just tank through it all. I love that this sword does more damage than a gun. It's pretty simple combat. Skeleton collapses into a pile of loose bones. Hellbender level 2. Hellbender, you tamper with the forces of nature, making yourself a force of nature. We get more spell damage, and we'll get more spell damage later. Your pulse quickens as you get near the translucent horse. Hello there. I'm a friend, okay? That's a little strange. How did you do that without opening your mouth? Uh, you pat the horse's nose, which is cold. If you were to ride here, you would want an extra saddle blanket to keep your butt from freezing. Yep, still cold. Yep, still cold. Here you go, girl. Have some oats. You hold out a handful of oats for the horse, but uh, she sort of just stares right through you. Or... Please, don't look at me like that. That's my horse noise? What's the matter? Are they not spooky enough? I don't know how to make oats spooky. I guess I could put some bone meal on them, but I don't have anything to grind up bones with. Grave dirt? Winnie. Is that a yes? Okay. You'll sprinkle the oats with some grave dirt and hold them out again. The horse gazes expressionlessly at them, expressionlessly at them, and eats them. Nay. Hey. With that, she glides away in the direction of town. Bizarre. Timothy Cochran. Elizabeth Cochran. Silas Cochrane. A baby. Oh god, he lived one year. Wait, what year is it? 1890. 1895? This guy just wouldn't stay put. Beauregard Skeleton. My pale horse made it back safe. Uh, this is a reference to the phrase that death rides a pale horse. I think it's from the Bible. Sometimes they make death's horse black, but sometimes they make it ghostly and pale. Thanks for having my crazy horse. He was eating loco weed again, wasn't he? Nothing to notice. Said something earlier about an injury. I busted my knee while walking out the showroom. Don't ask how. It's embarrassing. I was going to uh, get Doc Alice to look at it, but she gave up doctoring. But she do that? Uh, no, I didn't know. She just shut herself in her office. Said she wouldn't talk to anyone except Nurse Whiskey. Is that a nurse, or... I'm pretty sure she was being sarcastic. Okay. Sharf. Off for whiskey. Whiskey liver for you, Doc. What brand? Nurse whiskey. Your favorite, I'm led to believe. Didn't know she makes house calls. All right, hold up. 
Doc Alice looks to be in her 50s. Her hair is graying and face is lined. There's this art of Doc Alice, the concept art, where she's drawn not as a stick figure. And, like, it's so funny. The fact that they did concept art for, like, how this woman should look. And then they drew a stick figure anyway. Uh, her face is lined, but her eyes are clear and sharp. If bloodshot, she holds out her hand. Whiskey, stay it. She cracks open the whiskey and puts a, fills a small flask she takes out of her pocket. Then she puts the flask back in her pocket and starts chugging out of the bottle. Jeez, Doc, that uh, doesn't seem healthy. Who's the doctor here? Me or you? Point taken. The vanity doesn't seem like it. You uh, doesn't look like it sees much use. We preen a little. We grab a pair of tweezers and pluck some unsightly eyebrows. Hey, Doc, can I look at your books? Sure, if you want. Not they're gonna do you much good in this doom-forsaken hellhole. You should try being less cheerful, Doc. The Legend of Curly's Meat, The Life and Works of Fred Ferguson, The Goblinoid Tongue's a primer. So if we would have read this earlier, we could have talked to Goblin. Who I think his name Gary, but a lot of people use Gary as their guy, so I'm not going to. The book tells the legend of a legendary treasure, a chest of premium meat secreted in the hidden sets, not in the extruded sense. This is secreted and not secreted. In the western desert by an old cowhand named Curly Butterfield. The book purports to be a Civil War surgeon's autobiography, but flipping through, you mostly find lists of reasons that drinking alcohol is bad, so it's actually a work of ludicrous speculative fiction. There are some useful appendices in the back, and some diagrams of appendices. You start flipping through the Goblin language book. It's confusing, but you get so engrossed by the time you take a break from leading. Several blurfs have passed. You also learn that the blurf is the Goblin word for hour. You've learned to speak Goblin, sort of. The stove is spotless. Either she's really compulsive about cleaning or never cooks. Shouldn't these be further from the fireplace? Doc when uh, Alice continues to pour whiskey down her neck, occasionally stopping to breathe. Is everything all right? That depends on how fast I can get this whiskey into my blood screen stream compared to how fast my liver filters it out. And I can't talk and drink at the same time, so she glares at you meaningfully. So what's up? I mean, what's the matter, Doc? What's the matter? Whole world's gone to hell in a horse cart. You ask, what's the matter? Bandits, cow demons, dead men walking? Pick one. I'll drink to that. Dead men walking? You haven't seen it? Corpses and skeletons sagging around like puppets with half their strings cut, looking to take a bite out of the living? Oh yeah, there was a skeleton in the cemetery. It's nice to get some outside confirmation I'm not losing my damn mind. How is that even possible? It isn't possible. Goes against everything I know about medicine. Dead patients do not get back up. Dead patients. Ooh, ouch. Doc Alice turns away, grimacing. Every doctor loses one now and again. You never get used to it. You totally do. You totally can get used to it. Yeah, you never get used to it, but you know it happens. What doesn't happen is them coming back and looking for revenge. Uh, that, must, that must be pretty rough. R rough. But I don't think you comprehend the situation. It's not patients. It's neighbors, friends, husbands. Uh. Um, indeed. She turns away from you and focuses her attention back on the bottle. Hmm. Do you have any idea what's causing the resurrections? Well, I heard a rumor. A rumor, what is it? It's when you get incomplete information from an unverified source. <laughs> That's good. Look, there's a lot to be said about just writing your game to be funny and then not having voice acting. Funny things that you read are often way funnier than things that you hear. Remember the Deadpool game? If anyone's ever played that character you might have heard of, Deadpool? Um, in the Deadpool game, like, he'll say funny, wacky things in, in combat, but by the end of the game, you'll have heard every single possible funny, wacky thing, like, 30 times. Anyway, I heard there's a fellow out west that's causing it. A necromancer, they call him. Supposedly, he's sending out magic into the world. Magic like the Beanslingers use. Never heard of Beanslingers raising the dead, have you? That'd be one hell of a can of beans. What's with the TNT? Feels like... It's so when I feel like I can go, I can blow myself to bits so there's nothing left to come back. That seems drastic. Drastic hell. No way am I risking becoming one of those things. Fair enough. That necromancer. Assuming he exists, what about him? Well, maybe someone ought to try and stop him. Doc Alice gives you a sharp look. You? Because I know you, it's, you, it's, you ain't talking about me. By the necromancer. Why not you? A great harem woman that knows about much as fighting as a squirrel knows about surgery? Did you hit your head on a barstool, kid? You're not that old. If you're going to pick someone to go up against a necromancer, it'd be somebody who knows about death but in a scientific way. A doctor, right? Doc Alice stares at you and takes a swig from her bottle saying nothing. 
Sounds like you got plenty of motivation to get the job done for your friends and everyone. She continues to look at you. You can see the gears turning in her head. Beats doing nothing anyway. Beats stalking yourself in a house full of TNT and drinking yourself to death. You aren't even doctoring anymore. She winces and looks away. Then she shakes her head slowly. You seriously expect me to ride out west by myself, chasing a rumor? Doesn't have to be by yourself. I'm heading west. Tag along with me. Maybe we can find the guy and put a stop to him. It's crazy. Impossible. Impossible like raising the dead is impossible? Alice crosses her arms and regards you thoughtfully. A spark brightens in her eyes. All right, kid, what the hell? Let's give it a shot. Cool. So we can pick one partner as opposed to the typical sort of... I need a crow. Hmm. The shell is usable until the sheriff manages to screw it up again. You give it about a week. Uh, I found these mugs. Are you Susie Cochran? How, how'd you love my ass name? I saw the graves in the cemetery. Saw it happen. Saw the whole damn thing and couldn't do nothing about it. The bartender said it was cows. Cows, right? I'd know what those things are, but they ain't cows. Not anymore. What happened? It was a raid. See, Mom and Pa used to raise cattle before I, before they came home. Pa didn't make it. Ma and I ran to rebuild. We ran pigs, and she left in the place when she passed. Well, a passing herd sniffed out that it used to be a cow ranch and attacked a couple days ago. Happened so fast, I didn't even have time to get my rifle out of the gun safe. Cow smashed on the front door, and a fire started out by the root cellar. House went up in blazes just like that. What'd you do? There wasn't anything I could do. Couldn't get upstairs to the kids because of the fire. I saw Tim trampled right in front of me. I just... I don't want to talk about it no more. She refills her mug from a bottle on the bar and doesn't reply. What do you do now? Head west, I suppose. Nothing to keep me here and I have no desire to stay. I can't leave without my rifle, though. Why not? Ma's rifle. All I got left of anyone. Left it at the ranch like a damn fool. Can I ask you a favor? I need someone to go get it. Yeah. So in this game, you only get um, one party member. You can add another one through a special event. Susie's ranch is burned to the ground. Yeah, you can add another one. Something behind this door is making awful noises. We'll go through it anyway. Somebody was in the middle of fixing a knife. Varmint skin a knife. These pies were not safe. Whoa, one second. We'll be right back. The outhouse is the only thing still standing. Uh, but yeah, you only get one party member. You're not gonna make it to that safe without dealing with it. Deal with it. Yeah, let's beam shield up, huh? A pyrobove, which means flaming cow. We have three flame on us. Also, presumably this means that our fire damage would do even less. Yeah, fire resistance 50. 6 XP, mysticality go up. Susie's gun save. <laughs> Old rifle, but obviously been well cared for. There are six notches carved into the stock. All the water in the trough has boiled away. Cochran Ranch. Ranch. Since 81. 1881. This is 1890. So are we just not in 1890? I thought we were. Well, anyway. Bomb a rifle yet, stranger? Here she is. Susie's eyes well with tears as you hand her the rifle, and she roughly scrubs her sleeve across her face before any of them spill over. Thanks, stranger. I didn't catch your name. I'm Arizona. Thanks, Arizona. Can't really say what this means to me. Well, enough wallowing misery. Time for me to hit the road. If you want to tag along when you head west, just say the word. Um, I've forgotten how this happens exactly. I've forgotten who this is relevant for. But there are certain characters in this game...
Uh, there's certain characters in this game where... Warhol mine. If you uh, give yourself evil demonic powers, then they'll be mad at you. Plungers, the sign line, on, though there's the only only the one kind. Hook up the plunger. Fighting against your instincts for self-preservation, you've hooked up a plunger and strung it a fair distance away. You press the plunger and nothing happens. You need a blasting cap. Sorry, I... Damn it. We are in need of a needle. Sorry, it's been a while. This game is like four, five years old now. Maybe we can go back here and go through everything. That might make sense, right? Hmm. The shadow tech is pretty good in this game, I will say. It's much appreciated. The light is just honestly pretty cool. Hmm. Cock and ranch. I assume we can't just walk into a cactus, a cactus and get it. Maybe we can talk to Cactus Bill. That's his name, right? Um, pardon the, pardon the lapse of my memories here. No. Hmm. Alright. Let me think on that. I mean, I could cut here. That would make more sense. 